Hello world, Liu here. And today we'll be talking about nine things I never knew about ether tools in Python until recently. Number one, batched. So one thing to note is that this is only available in Python 3.12 and above. So if you're using Python 3.11 and below, this won't be available to you. So first things first, from ether tools, import batched. So here's what it does for i in batch, let's say a, b, c, d, e, f, g, and if I put a 2 here, and if I print i, this will happen. So here I'm going to get a, b, c, d, e, f, and g. So notice that whatever is printed here comes in batches of 2. So a, b, followed by c, d, followed by e, f, and followed by g. So if, let's say, h, i, j, k, l, m, n, o, p, and if I change this to 3, they are going to come in batches of 3 next. So here we have a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i, and so on. So here notice that the last entry, which cannot form a group of 3, will be alone. Similarly, if I change this to a 4, it will be batches of 4. So this can be quite useful if you have a long list of stuff and you will need to group them together like this. Number two, ethertools.pairwise. So from ethertools, import pairwise. So let's say I have a iterable x is equals to a, b, c, d, e, f, g. And if I do this for left, right, in pairwise, x, I'm going to print left and right. So here I'm gonna get A B B C C D D E E F and F G. So in terms of my iterable, I'm gonna get these two first. And overlapping next, I'm gonna get B C, I'm gonna get C D, I'm gonna get D E, E F, and F G. So this function is useful if I need to compare an element with its neighbors. For example, A with B, and then B with C, and C with D d with e, e with f, and f with g, and so on. So here, if I pass in a list, so let's say apple, orange, pear, pineapple, durian. So if I run this, this will happen. So here, I'm going to have apple, orange first. Then afterwards, I'm going to have orange, pear. And afterwards, I'm going to have pear, pineapple. And finally, I'm going to have pineapple, durian. So here, the pairwise function actually saves us the need to write our own logic in order to achieve this. Number three, accumulate. So similarly, from the tool, import accumulate, and for i in accumulate, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, I'm simply going to print i. And here we have it, a, a, b, a, b, c, a, b, c, d, a, b, c, d, e, a, b, c, d, e, f, and a, b, c, d, e, f, g. So we start from a only, then followed by a, b, and so on until we reach the entire iterable. Number four, permutations and combinations. So from iter tools, import star. So let's say I have a list containing a bunch of stuff. Let's say one, two, three, four, five. And next, let's say I want to generate every single permutation of length three. For perm in permutations, list and length three. So I'm going to print perm and n is equals to space. So if I run this, I'm going to print every single permutation of length 3. And here we have it. So here, if I change this 3 to a 2, I'm going to get every single permutation of length 2. So here, if I change this to combinations, I'm going to get every single permutation of length 2. So note that this is shorter than the permutations because in a combination, the order does not matter. While in a permutation, the order does actually matter. So here, rather than writing your own function to generate every permutation or combination, you can simply use the iter tools combinations and permutations function in order to do this. Number five, iter tools dot product. So similarly, iter tools import product. So here, I'm going to write three lists. So a is equals to a one, a two, a three. B is equals to 3, 4, 5, and C is equals to, let's say, 100, 200, and 300. So next, I'm going to write a triple nested for loop. So for i in A, for j in B, and for k in C. 
and if I print i, j, and k, I'm going to get this. So a1, 3, 100, a1, 3, 200, a1, 3, 300, a1, 4, 100, and so on. So for each of the values here, I'm going to have every of this value here. And for each of this value here, I'm going to have all of the values here. However, let's comment this out and let's get rid of this. So here, this is actually what the product function will help us to do. So for ijk in product of a, b, and c, I'm going to print ijk. So if I run this, I'm going to get the same output as this triple nested for loop over here. So here, the product function actually saves us the time of having to write this triple nested for loop. Number six, group by. So here, I'm just going to create a list of words first. So let's start from A. So apple, N, let's say, um, boy, B, so cat, donkey. So here, we have three words beginning with A, two words beginning with B, and one with C, and one with D. So next, from Ether tools, import, group by. So for I in group by, list, and here we have a condition. So this condition is actually a function. So because we haven't defined condition, let's actually define one condition right now. So define condition. So it takes in an element and it returns the first letter of the element. So if I do this, I'm going to get A, B, C, D. So this is the key that is applied when I apply the condition to each of the elements here. And over here, we have a grouper object. So let's change this first. So for key, group, let's bring key and group. So once again, if we run this, we are still going to get a and ether tools dot grouper object. So here, let's actually convert the group into a list so that we can actually see what's happening inside. So right now, we have a containing apple, n, and um. We have b containing boy, and b. We have C containing cat, and we have D containing donkey. So notice that everything in a group here starts with A, everything in a group here starts with B, everything in a group here starts with C, and everything in a group here starts with D. So this is actually what our condition function here is for. So one thing here is that we can replace this with a lambda function. So lambda x, x, 0. So let's get rid of this so we can save a few lines of code. So if we run this again, we will get the same result. However, if let's say I put apple again and auntie, this will be a different group. So here, note that these two elements will not be joined with this over here because there's a separation between them. Number seven, compress. So first, I'm going to create a list of fruits. So fruits equals to apple, orange, pear, pineapple, banana. And next, I'm going to create a key. So let's say 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, which means that apple we keep, we don't keep orange, we don't keep pear, we keep pineapple, and we keep banana. So we can actually condense this using the compress function. So from ether tools, import compress, and for i in compress fruits and keep, I'm going to print i. And so if I run this, I'm only going to print apple, pineapple, and banana. And this is because of my keep over here. So here, if I change this to a 1, I'm going to have apple, orange, pineapple, and banana. And if, let's say, I change this to a 0, pineapple is going to disappear from my list. Number 8, zip longest. So firstly, I'm going to create three lists. So A is equals to 1, 2, 3. B is equals to 10, 20, 30, and C is equals to 100 and 200. So first, let's talk about the normal zip function. So let's say for i, j, k in zip a, b, and c, and we print i, j, k. So let's add a 300 here first. And if we run this, we are simply going to get 1, 10, 100, 2, 20, 200, and 3, 30, 300. So here, the zip function actually allows us to loop through these three iterables at one go. However, if we remove this 300 over here, 
and let's run this we'll only get 1 then 100 and 2 20 200 and this is because our normal zip function will stop when we reach the end of the shortest iterable so here c only has two elements which means c is the shortest iterable and hence our zip function will just simply stop here however if we use iter tools zip longest from iter tools import zip longest and let's add a zip longest here and let's run this again we can actually bypass this restriction however whatever does not exist will simply be a none in this case so let's say i have a 4 5 6 here and let's say i have a 40 and 50 so if i run this i'm gonna get 1 2 3 4 5 6 correct 10 20 30 all the way to 50 correct and for c i'm only gonna get 100 and 200 and the rest are going to be none so this zip longest function is useful if you want to bypass the restriction of our normal zip function number nine repeat and cycle so from iter tools import repeat and cycle so let's first deal with repeat so for i in repeat so let's say i repeat abc and if i print i i'm just going to repeat abc infinitely so that's all that repeat does and let's deal with cycle now so for i in cycle abc print i and so if i run this i'm gonna get a b c a b c a b c and this cycle goes on infinitely also so these two functions are pretty useful if you wish to repeat a certain cycle infinitely so thanks for watching and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about iter tools today See you in the next one.